welcome to the All Around Joe Podcast, where we optimize your human performance from my personal experience as an athlete, coach, and all-around self-improvement junkie. On this edition of the All Around Joe Podcast, we are talking about three tips to improve your relationships during COVID stay at home, essentially. So there's a lot of people that have actually asked Emily and I about our relationship and how we've gotten along in the van for so long because these people are now having to live in close quarters with each other and they hadn't done that in a long time. So this is why I feel like we are, I should have Emily on this podcast as well, but we are qualified to talk about this. We've been living in an 80 square foot sprinter van, the smallest 144 version for about two years now. Well, we actually came up on the two year mark, but we haven't been in the van for the last, what, month and a half, two months because of this situation, but we're still hanging out in very close quarters together. So I think that we're still going to be qualified to do that. And we don't have van life stopping anytime soon in our near future because it's been working so great for us that we have no reason that we want to. And I could tell you about all of the things that I'm incredibly excited about to keep on going in the van life routine because it's just so much fun. We don't have any any reason that we would stop anytime soon other than we've been looking at some properties to buy, but it doesn't mean that we want to stop van life. We just, we found a cool property that we would like to buy and that's about it and we would like to hold on to that until we're done with van life which is like who knows when that would be so we have a few things that we've done that we've improved upon that have made our relationship easier because we spend so much time together and just to give you a little bit of preference or preface we have this 80 square foot sprinter van we work full time from the van we work out together as often as we can. Our schedules tend to be a little bit different from time to time, but we work out together. We've been training for a marathon together, and we pretty much just do all of our activities together, eating, sleeping, running, working out, snowboarding, hiking, running, (laughs) all that stuff. Here's what I'm going to share with you. Three tips that we've used and come up with over the last two years that have made it easier and more fun and have taken advantage of just enjoying each other's time together while we are in very close quarters. So if you're in a relationship and you've been wondering about how to make this work or how to improve it, then this is going to be the podcast for you. Or if you would like to be in a relationship at some point, this could also be that podcast for you. Taking taking notes on this stuff would not be a bad idea because I've definitely had to go through it the wrong way and then have relationships fail and then figure it out. So that's where we're getting this information right now through trial and error. And I do a lot of reading, a lot, a lot of reading. So I'm getting this information from somebody else probably and then putting it into use and seeing if it works. And if it works, then we stick with it. And if it doesn't, then we toss it on out and get rid of it. So this podcast is brought to you by the Get Better Project, which is my online at-home workout program that has workouts for people that have zero equipment, workouts for people that have just a couple of dumbbells, and workouts for people that have a full home gym set up with barbells and all that fun stuff. We have, let's see, about 40 people in the program right now. It is going great. We have a three, I'm sorry, a free 30-day program where you can go and get signed up for 30 days and join us. And I want to talk to you about how it's not just a regular workout program where you get workouts and videos and and whatnot like that. We also do coaching. So every single week, the reason that I think that it is has been growing and the people are so excited about it is that every single week we send out a form to you. It's a Google form and you go through, it takes like five minutes to fill out and it talks about how your workouts are going. It talks about how your nutrition is going. It talks about how your stress is, which has been really interesting during this time because people have all kinds of different stressors coming up. So we talk about stress. We talk about sleep. We talk about how you're working on your body. And all of these things have been very cool because we can see exactly where people need to improve on in order to continue getting results in not only their fitness, but in their health and their life. 
So if we talk about a couple of different things and have a couple of different strategies for, for people, then it, it will improve their whole life circle and not just their fitness, which is the Get Better Project's motto is to make you an awesome human, not just to you know get your abs popping out. Yes, we'll do that. That's cool. We can do that. You know, fitness, nutrition, all that fun stuff. But if you're not sleeping well, if you're super stressed, it's going to be hard to have you even reach that result. So that's what we do in the Get Better Project. If you'd like to try out the full program for 30 days, head over to thegetbetterproject.com slash 30 days and make sure that if you sign up for that, that you are getting, you get the emails. Emails are coming from joe at thegetbetterproject.com and you have to fill out the waiver because we are a legit program you have to fill out the waiver in order for us to work with you. So sign up, fill out the waiver, ask to join the Facebook group, get involved in our Sugar Watt account, and we will love to work with you. All right, let's get into this relationship stuff here. Yes, fun relationship stuff. So the first tip that I'm going to give you is something that we've been doing for a few years now, and we took it into van life because it was working so well. And this is a monthly check-in that we do where it has become fun. We usually do a coffee date, but it could be like a wine date or something like that. And what you do when you're first starting this off, you write down questions or goals that you have for your relationship that you can check in on once a month to see how you're doing for them. It's super easy. You just do it in a notes app. It can be a shared notes app. And then when you're going over these questions, you take notes on whether or not you accomplish them. And you can adjust things along the way because sometimes you set expectations that are too high or too low and you have to make those adjustments. So an example of some of these things, and they should be, you know, about 10 questions at least. And you'll find that you may add or get rid of questions as you go along because they either aren't relevant or they become unrelevant or you have other things that do become relevant. So the first thing, the first few questions that I would like to give you to get you started on this are number one, uh, are you feeling supported? So you both answer this question, are you feeling supported? And it's not just a yes or a no. It's like, yes, I'm feeling supported because of this, this, or this thing that your partner did for you. Um, the next one is, is what was your highlight of the month? So we're always trying to pull out the positives in every day, every week, every month. So if you focus on what the highlights were, not only will it make you feel good about finding what those highlights were. But as the supportive partner, you can see what your partner's highlight was for that particular month. So you can try and replicate that. A lot of times, it's not that we don't want to have our relationships and be supportive of the other person. It's that we're not thinking about it and we're not asking the right questions so that we know exactly what that person needs in order to feel the way that we want them to feel. And we can't guess that stuff, guys. So if you're in the type of relationship where you, you know, buying you're buying flowers for your significant other because you think that they like them. Maybe they do, maybe they don't. Have you ever asked them if flowers are like the thing for them? Not all females are flower lovers, let me tell you. So or, you know, the specific kind or whatnot. So it can mean more if you ask them about it and maybe there's something else. Maybe you cooking dinner is way more interesting and feelings of support for them than buying some flowers. So you start by asking and and figuring out what those questions are and hearing what those highlights are. Then the next one is, what do you feel like we can improve upon? So this one's kind of like scary because you ask and you get to the nitty gritty stuff on this question about what you can improve upon. But that's where the gold is when you can really pull out the feelings that someone else is having in the relationship about what specifically can make the relationship better. And once you've done this a few times, it becomes super easy and it's not an issue at all. And if you've had a cup of coffee or a glass of wine, it makes it go down much more smooth. You can basically take these questions and build off of them based off of your relationship. Like I said, we have about 10 of them that we do. Some of the other ones that you can throw in there are just going to be like like particular goals. So we have a goal to have a date night once a week, which is just where right now we can't pull it off going out to a restaurant, but where we would have you know, make some food or order some food even better. So it's kind of like a treat kind of a night where you maybe you could get some 
pizza delivered or go pick up some pizza or something like this and you actually sit down and have what you would consider to be a date night. That's one of our goals is to have a date night once a week. It is to hang out with friends once a week. And on the road, this was a little bit harder. So we had to kind of mold this to our particular situation. But our goal is to hang out with friends socially once a week. And right now, it's really hard because we can't hang out with anybody. (laughs) So these particular goals are things that you can set up based off of what you think would be ideal for your particular relationship. It could be that you want to hang out with friends twice a week. It could be that you want to have, you know, a girl's night or a guy's night. And that could be something that helps your relationship because you spend time away and then time back with that particular person. Same kind of thing when we're in lockdown right now. It's not that you can't go for a walk. Maybe you need to go for a walk by yourself in order to recharge your batteries. And that's totally fine because it brings the relationship up when you're in the relationship. So forcing yourself in these particular situations and knowing or, or is not always going to be beneficial. You need to know what you need in particular for yourself in order to get the most out of the relationship. The second tip is to make sure you both know what each other's days look like. This is so important when we're in this lockdown or when you're living in a small confined area because one person could have a an expectation of the particular day and what they're trying to accomplish and the other person has a completely different expectation and that can cause major issues. So one thing that we had that we struggled with from the start is that I had an expectation when we started out on the road that I wanted to work out the normal schedule that we were would have had would have done when we were at home. So that meant that about 5 days a week we were going to get a workout done and we would, at first we weren't running the get better project. So we were just kind of going off of like random stuff, which made it really hard. Now the get better project has actually made it much easier because uh, we write these workouts in advance so that when they come up, we know, all right, this is the workout for today. And this is what we're going to try and accomplish. Back then it was like, we didn't have a workout for the day necessarily. We were just going to go and try some stuff and see what it felt like or like find something to do or write something right there on the spot. Not a good way of doing a workout program and being accountable for it. But what the problem was that I was accountable to myself to just work out no matter what. And she would have different things that she wanted to accomplish, whether it be work or some other thing. And it wasn't as important to her. So I would be waiting the whole day to start a workout and not verbalizing that I was waiting for that, just with the expectation that it was the same as before. And then when we would get to the end of the day and I was feeling tired, I was like, now I don't really feel like working out. She's like, oh, I wasn't going to work out today. But we didn't have that expectation built up or we didn't have that communication in the first place. So what we learned is that I personally need to almost work out every day and it it works better for me if I work out earlier rather than later. And for her, it doesn't necessarily matter and she is not as concerned with making sure to work out all the time or every day. It it doesn't really help with her, you know, feeling good and whatnot. It's not as important as it is to me. So what we decided was that if I need to work out, it's okay if I just go and do it. And that would be fine. And maybe I end up working out twice because we end up working out later as well with her workout or she hops in with me, but it's not going to be an issue of, hey, I'm waiting for this particular person or I'm waiting for you to get this particular thing done. We just cleared it up. And now if I am, let's say we're working at a coffee shop or a grocery store or something like that, if it's time for me and I need to work out and that's a particular time of day that it was going to fit in best, I will just go out in the parking lot, throw out a towel or a mat and just work out right there. And then I'll head back into the coffee shop or store and continue to work. And if she has time for it, maybe she'll go do that as well. Or maybe she'll wait until we get back to the campsite or whatever it may be. But we are both getting what we need to get done as far as like an energy standpoint goes. And we're not relying upon that other person. Whereas, you know, in the normal life when we were living at a house, we would both go to the gym at the same time. We'd both work out at the same time. It was like, this is the set time because it had to be. There was not any other options. But things became more variable when you hit the road. And then you can, it's actually better because then you can do these particular things when they feel best for you. 
but it can be an issue if you're not communicating about it. So I highly recommend that you use a shared calendar. That's something that we use it works where if it's important enough for that particular day, we have it in the calendar and you know use calendar invites, all that fun stuff. So that those particular people can see what you're trying to accomplish and what you're up to for that day so that they can support you in it and adjust things so that if there are things you guys want to do together, you know what those particular things are and you don't have to like try and give a verbal rundown. Like if somebody gave me a verbal rundown of their day, hey, you know, I'm going to try and do this, this, and this, this. I'm not a, a verbal person necessarily, which is funny because I'm doing a podcast, but I am doing a video podcast. So you may be watching this on YouTube and understand what I'm talking about. So I'm not so much of a verbal person when you're talking to me. I don't, it doesn't lock in. I have no idea what you just said, you know, 30 seconds after it, unless there was some sort of, you know, bullet point that had a reason for it to stand out there. But if I look at your calendar, my visual learning is way different and it locks it in right away. I'm a very visual learner. So if it's in there, then it locks in. That being said, you have to understand what type of learner each of you is in the relationship. So one might be audio, one might be visual, and then you have to do both of those particular things in order for the people, for both people to understand and feel comfortable with that particular situation. So I highly recommend the calendar thing. And, and the calendar thing will work even for the, the verbal person because they can look at it over and over again, even if that that uh, isn't their, their form of learning. But if somebody says something, you can't re-say it over and over again. So that, see where the problem is there? But I highly recommend checking that out. You know, Google calendars or all these calendar systems have shared systems at these time, these days. So do that or write it down or whatever it may be, but, or communicate it verbally. Just make sure that you are communicating it. That was a big one for us that has really propelled our, or decreased the amount of anxiety or, or you know, tension that we had early on. The third tip that I have for you, and this one is hugely beneficial, is finding something that you both enjoy doing together and do it often. For Emily and I, this is working out. We work out together. We run together. We train for whatever we're doing in a workout setting together. And like I said, it doesn't always have to do with us working out at the same time, but we're trying to accomplish a similar goal. And if the activity that you're doing together is to accomplish a goal together, and it's very clear what that goal is, then it brings you guys closer together. And if there's exertion in it, meaning that you have to work hard, then you have hormones that are released that will bring you even closer together. So I'm a huge fan of you guys working out together, running together, whatever it may be for a particular goal. If it's a workout, then it could be that you're trying to help each other get the best score on that workout or work out as hard as you can. This makes it harder when you're doing like these bodybuilding style workouts where it's just like, yeah, I'm trying to do eight reps. Why do you care about that? I don't know. I mean, you still, it's not, I'm saying that you don't need to do it, but I just feel like when you're doing it all the time like that, it's like, all right, so I'm helping you to get, you know, the best looking abs. And maybe that's a very underlying goal for me. That's just not, I'm not passionate about that. So I am passionate about getting more fitness so that I can do more cool things, be better at snowboarding, be better at running, be better at hiking, be better at, you know, all of these things that life can throw at us that can be fun. Um, but just having big muscles that look good, that's not, the vanity part isn't really all that interesting, but it might be for you. Um, so if you have this common goal that you're trying to accomplish, and this could be like, all right, we're trying to train for a marathon. And we're trying to get better and, and fit enough that we can do this marathon successfully. And we know what that goal is and we're doing it and we're, you know, working hard. And because we're working hard, we're getting the hormone release, we're connecting, we're trying to get this shared goal done. This could also be for like uh, something else physical, like building a shed, building a house, you know, and the female might be like, well, the man does that. And it's like, no, nah, that's bullshit. So, you know, just contributing and working together, working in the garden, any of those particular things. But you have to know what that common goal is. And for one person, it might just be that the common goal is to make the other person feel good. And the other one is to feel good because they have a pretty, pretty garden or they're growing some vegetables or something like that. But it's good to know what those particular things are like so that you're trying to accomplish things with a reason and not just, you know, 
doop ba doop ba doop dum boo boop bop bop boo you know whatever just going through life communicate guys communicate verbally or via you know if you like writing things down write down pass the paper over have the person read it write some more down pass it over whatever you just need to communicate that's the biggest thing that is coming out of this is the three tips or that if you're trying to have a positive high quality relationship with somebody that is in close quarters is that you need to really communicate what's going on on a regular basis that's it that's it communicate and 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 if you want to go to the next level you set goals together because if you're and this came up twice right it came up twice already setting goals is going to be very beneficial in our homing devices that we have in our brain of trying to accomplish things. So if you're trying to accomplish things together, it's going to bring you closer together. And that could be the case of trying to accomplish date nights once a week. That could be trying to accomplish running a marathon together. You know, it could be trying to accomplish building a house or raising children that are high quality children. You know, it could be whatever it is that makes your life feel better. But you have to know what those things are just going through life for whatever reason doesn't make any sense at all. And you're not going to have any reason to be excited about it. So in this time, build on your relationship, talk more, communicate more, have goals that you set together, even if it's like doing puzzles together or something like that. Set it, measure it, and get better at it. Which brings me to the Get Better Project. If you guys want to, which would be fantastic, and we've got several couples that are actually doing the Get Better Project together, two of them just joined the other day, you can do it together. You both join the Get Better Project free 30 days, and you come in and check it out together. You do the workouts together, which are awesome to do them together because you get all these shared hormones and fun stuff that's going to be happening uh, improvements, all that stuff. Make sure that you set a goal together of why you're doing those particular workouts that is interesting to you. So, a lot of times people will come in and do a workout program, and they're like, "Oh yeah, I did it," you know, or their goal is not powerful enough. They're like, "Yeah, I want to look good. This summer's coming up," but that worked for like a week, you know. Like, really, why do you want to? Like, I've talked about this for before from for, with you guys. My passion is to inspire other people. Like for whatever reason, that's my burning desire. So if you're listening to this and you go and you make yourself better in any particular way because of listening to these things that have worked for me, that makes me excited. Just thinking about it, not even knowing that you did do that makes it exciting for me. And I can't tell you why, but you all have something inside of you that makes it exciting for you. And you, you know, that could be your health, that could be inspiring somebody in your life to be better themselves, that could be the abs, you could be a vanity person, and you just want to be on the cover of that magazine, or, you know, have your friends know that you look great in a bathing suit, whatever it may be, that's fine, you just have to figure out what that particular thing is, because after the first week of being sore, you need to have that particular thing that you don't care about the soreness anymore, because you're so driven to get it done. And that's going to waver. That's fine. But you need to know what it is because so you can always come back to it, you know, always come back to it. And if you guys have any questions about that, let me know. I'm happy to dig into those with you. A lot of times people also don't want to reach out to me because they're like, oh, you know, I wouldn't want somebody to reach out to me or I don't want to burden Joe with my problems. That's 100% fine with me, guys. I am here to help and I like helping and it is cool to me when you reach out, even if you have problems. One thing though, one little note, if you reach out to me and you say, hey, I want this fitness result and I'm doing these particular things and I'm not getting my results. When I ask you questions and you give me the answers and then I tell you why you're not getting the results and what you need to do to improve in order to get those results, I know what I'm talking about. And you thinking that you watch some video on YouTube about some guy that's got abs and his 30 crunches, you know, 30 days in a row are, are not working for you and that, but you're an expert because you saw that and because he said that, 
come on. If I'm going to give you some advice, it's going to be stuff that works based off of thousands of people that I've worked with and worked on myself. I walk the walk, talk the talk, and I know what the heck I'm talking about. So it's very easy for people to think that they are influencer fitness people out there. But so many of those people don't know what the heck they're talking about and they stumbled into the results and they're trying to sell you something that they don't even know why it works. So if I'm going to give you some real deal information about what you need to do, if you're going to reach out to me, listen to what the heck I'm talking about, please. All right, guys. If you would like to be plugged into what I'm doing daily at the Get Better Project and what Emily is doing and what works for you every single day from an at-home fitness program standpoint, head over to the getbetterproject.com slash 30 days and try us out. We would love to have you and we would love to work with you in the future. All right, guys, if you have any questions, let me know. Thanks for listening. Make sure that you are following what we're up to at the Get Better Project on Twitter and Instagram, even if you are not part of the program because we're posting almost every single day on there about tips and tricks and what we're up to. And there you have it. All right, guys, we're really close to getting to 100 reviews. So if you wouldn't mind heading over to iTunes, giving us a review. I think we're at high 90s even. So there's only a few more that we need, but we highly recommend getting those five-star or highly love getting those five-star reviews from you. So we really appreciate that. And uh, that's all I've got to say. So hope you guys have a fantastic week, month, year, life, and I will talk to you soon. The All Around Joe Podcast, we optimize your human performance from my personal experience as an athlete, coach, and all-around self-improvement. I will see you on the next podcast.